Well, this is definitely another Calm Before the Storm, Season 2, Episode 8, Nebraska. So, this is sort of the aftermath of that crazy cliffhanger ending. I don't know if it's a cliffhanger ending or if it's like... Uh, I don't know how to describe that kind of ending, because, I mean, they did show it with Sophia, and they did kill her, so that it didn't really leave on anything, but... It was a big event that happened, and, like, you still wanted to see what happens next. Even though they already got the huge thing out of the way with Sophia. Um, but anyways, um, they still haven't figured out whether they're going to stay or go. They're like talking to Herschel in the bar about it right now. And these two guys came in. Rick just shot him because they threatened to shoot Rick. And it was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. But Herschel, dude, I feel so bad for Herschel. I mean, he had everything under control. He was, him and his family or friends were safe in that barn. Uh, they had all the walkers in the barn. They weren't doing nothing. Like, even if even if he was wrong about there possibly being a cure or the fact that they could still be alive instead of sick, even if he was wrong about that, he still had them safe and secure in there. They weren't hurting anybody. Just let them hang on to it. It was... Come on. So, yeah, they kind of took everything away from Herschel. It's just awful. Shane... Shane is just terrible, but... Hopefully... They will put an end to Shane's stuff soon. I'm surprised they didn't do it this time because Herschel wants Shane gone, obviously, and Dale is really catching on to Shane's garbage. I mean, Dale even hinted at it towards Lori. Um, she didn't choose to believe it at first. Maybe she'll think about it. Um, but Dale is starting to Dale's starting to tattle, and hopefully Shane doesn't figure out and take it out on Dale. That's what I feel like. I feel like if Shane goes down, he's going to take Dale with him. At first, I thought it was going to be Andrea, but now I think she's seeing what's up with Shane. Uh, just a tiny bit, though. Not nearly to the extent that Dale is seeing, but... Oh, man. If Shane goes down, he's probably going to bring Dale down with him. I don't I don't want that to happen. I just want Shane to go alone. Uh, maybe Andrea, too. I, I still think Andrea can redeem herself, maybe. But Shane is just... He's driving me nuts. Um... But I did mention earlier, uh, Lori. Speaking of Lori, she's probably dead or hurt really bad or something. Because she, <laughs> she was driving. And of course, she can't go 10 feet without getting in trouble by herself. Jeez Louise, Lori. Get your act together. <laughs> like, she looks away from the road for one second, runs over a walker, and then she freaks out and wrecks the car. And now she's probably stranded somewhere. Rick's going to go back to the camp. He's going to ask Daryl. Then he's going to get mad at Daryl for sending her off to do it. And Daryl's done enough already. He doesn't need to do any more. But nope, he's going to get screamed at anyways. Daryl doesn't need this. Daryl doesn't deserve this. Uh, come on, please let Daryl get off scot-free for this. Uh, but Glenn and Maggie are also still being frustrating. Ugh, there's so much to talk about this episode. But I think I pretty much covered it already. Lori in the car wreck. Oh yeah, Carol. I learned her name now. Carol seems a bit unhinged about Sophia, um, but I don't want to go on too much longer because this part's already over three minutes long. So yeah, Glenn and Maggie are still flip-flopping. Carol's kind of losing it a little bit. Daryl's doing his own thing. Lori's in a car wreck. They're all in the bar trying to convince Herschel. So much is going on. Let's see what happens next. Ooh, it's coming. Oh, it's all coming. Season 2, Episode 9. So, at the bar, it seems they had resolved things with Herschel. But then, the two guys that they shot last time, their friends came to look for them or try and avenge them because Rick kind of blurted out and told them that they were dead and they had been shot. Come on, Rick. Why'd you tell them? Uh, but anyways, luckily they made it out okay, but not before picking up a kid that got impaled on this gate. Oh, that was awful. I thought we were about to watch them hack off his leg. That was absolutely terrifying, but instead of just hacking it off, they ran out of time, so Rick just yanked him off. I'm surprised the kid wasn't be uh, begging to be put out of his misery and shot or something, because that is... Ah, uh, ha 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 ha. But anyways, Lori is doing pretty fine, actually. She defended herself pretty well against the walkers. She was found by Shane and brought back to the farm. But Shane is, getting, is still getting a bit too comfy cozy. He's trying to invade Rick's space. And so at the end there, Lori was pretty much trying to spill everything about Shane. About Shane thinking that the baby was his, and about Shane still thinking that Lori is his, and just good grief. 
and Shane had this whole little monologue about, like, Lori, Lori, you know we were real, Lori. We were the one good thing in this awful world, Lori. You know it was real. Uh, Shane, shut up. You just did it with Andre like an episode or two ago. You do not know what's real and what isn't. If you truly loved Lori, then you would not have done that. But near the end of the episode, they did hint at Andrea and Shane deciding yet again to run away from everyone and go out on their own. And you know what? I would be okay with that because they are both, as characters, driving me nuts. Um, Glenn and Maggie are also driving me nuts, but not as characters. I like Glenn as a character very much. I like Maggie as a character very much. But they are just driving me nuts with their will they, won't they, oh my gosh. <laughs> How can things be picking up this much, but still feel like they're dragging on? Now I see what people meant. Um, this isn't a bad, this isn't bad though. This is not a bad season. I, I still like it very much. I'm just like, want them to get to the point already with all the buildup. Oh, I can tell there's going to be a huge explosion. Especially between Rick and Shane, because now, now Rick knows everything and there's like this whole buildup and zoom in on Rick's face. Like, Lori made it a point that Rick, or Rick made it a point that he killed the living to protect what's his. And then, <laughs> and then Lori just said that Shane thinks that, the, uh, that uh, Lori is his. So, Rick is starting to see that. Is he going to go after Shane instead? <laughs> At first I thought Shane was going to kill Rick, but it seems like Rick might be about to go after Shane. So, I'm going to get into the next episode and see what happens. Um, I mean, I know I can't have double standards like, oh man... Uh, Sh Shane is terrible because he wanted to kill Rick. And then I can't be like, oh, good job, Rick, you want to kill Shane now. I know I can't have those double standards, but there's just so much else that Shane has done compared to Rick. So I'm kind of still, still more on Rick's side. Just Shane's crazy, man. Next episode. <laughs> Woo! Season 2, episode 10 was good! So basically in this episode, Rick and Shane um, were taking that kid that Rick found out to leave him somewhere so that way um, he wouldn't run off to his gang and tell everyone about them so they won't attack. Um, before I get into the good stuff though I want to address a concern that I may have thanks to this kid. You see Glenn and Maggie are frustrating me but that's only because I want them to hurry up and get together instead of the will they won't they thing. It's not like I just want them to break it off because I don't think it'll ever work. I do think it'll work and I hope it works but this kid, he mentioned, he um, basically revealed that he knew the farm and knew where the farm was. And that he knew Maggie, even though Maggie didn't know him. He made it sound like a super generic loser guy where the girl doesn't notice him. High school love story. And so I'm thinking, like, if he, if they take him to the farm and they decide to keep him alive, then he's going to cause some sort of love triangle between uh, f um, Glenn, Maggie, and him. Which is super unfortunate, and I'm really not looking forward to it if that's the road they take, because we just finished a Rick, Shane, and Lori love triangle. Hopefully Shane has gotten the message finally to keep his paws off. <laughs> but yeah, lots of stuff in this episode went down. Rick and Shane had like this whole Naruto Sasuke style showdown just beating the crap out of each other to settle their differences. <laughs> And honestly, I'm still not a fan of Shane because he did a lot of stuff and they still haven't addressed him trying to, you know, rape Lori. I mean, they've addressed him flirting with Lori, still thinking Lori's his, but they still have not addressed that specific part. So if Shane just gets let off scot-free for that, then that's going to be, it's going to feel like a cheat to redemption. Like he's still guilty of something that hasn't been resolved yet. Maybe they have mentioned it and I just missed it. Let me know in the comments if they have, but uh, if they have if they have it planned to come up later, then oh boy, I'm anticipating to see what happens then, but I I don't feel like this I don't feel like this completely changed Shane. I feel like he's going to pull something else because there still is Dale tattling on him. You know, all this different stuff going on related to Shane. Herschel probably still doesn't like him very much. So, tons of stuff though. Speaking of Herschel and his family, though, uh, the blonde girl, I think her name was Beth, um, Maggie's sister. She wanted to commit suicide, and of course, Andrea made the bad decision and said, Hey, go ahead and make the choice. Make the choice yourself. And then afterwards, after she attempted it and regretted it, Andrea's like, She lived. Well, she lived, okay? She decided she wanted to live, and she did live. Haha. 
No, Andrea, she still attempted it. What would have happened if she decided that she did want to live, but she had done too much and it was too late and it killed her anyways? That would be on you. And what Lori said at the end to Maggie about, you know, sometimes you have to cross the line to see that you shouldn't have. I honestly don't know what to think about that. I'm not going to comment on that, but I'll, th I'll think it over. Uh, during this next episode, and maybe if I can remember, I will comment on it. But anyways, this episode was crazy. On to the next. Oh my gosh, episode 11. <laughs> oh. This episode completely destroyed Carl as a character for me. It's going to be really hard for him to redeem himself, but... Carl. Carl. He opens up the episode by sneaking into the barn without permission. And then he begs not for he begs Shane not to tell his parents when he gets busted. Ugh. And then and then he attacks Carol and her faith. Disrespectful little brat. And then then he goes off in the woods unattended and stirs up a walker, helps it escape, pretty much. Because he pushed it to struggle for harder and escape the lake it was stuck in. Then he wants to watch Rick shoot uh, the kid they captured. He just wanted to watch him shoot. Just wanted to watch this kid die for some reason. And then that walker that he pretty much prompted to escape came and killed... Well, te technically Daryl killed Dale, but... The walker that Carl let free came up and, like, ripped Dale open, and so they had to put him down, and... Jeez. What happened to the kid that was so amazed by the beautiful deer that he saw the other day? He didn't think about getting shot, he just thought about seeing the deer. He's... What happened to that? What happened to that Carl? Where's that Carl? Where's that innocent kid that was optimistic in these horrible times? What happened... What happened to that Carl? Dale, dude. He was trying so hard to save someone's life. And then that happens. I feel so bad for Dale. So bad. Good grief. And I'm gonna do it. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I blame Shane. I blame Shane. <sighs> He's too much of a bad influence on Carl. That's That's gotta be it. Shane is shoot, shoot, shoot everyone. And th that's what Carl is picking up. Rick's got to do something. Rick has got to do more than, no, Carl, that's wrong. He got to go apologize. He's got to do more. He's got to do a punishment. He's got to have a hard adult talk with Carl. Carl wants to act like an adult? Have an adult talk with him. Come on, Rick. Do something with your thing. I don't even know whether to call him a boy anymore. Just a child thing. Oh, Carl. Getting over that, though. Oh. Um, There were a few other tiny things, like... Herschel pretty much giving Glenn, uh, Herschel pretty much giving Glenn his blessing to date and be with Maggie and stuff. So that was really nice. Hopefully they'll finally settle things. They will. And I'm not worried about that kid and Maggie anymore. That pretty they pretty much avoided it entirely. He may have just been making that up as a lie or something to get them to bring him back to the farm. Maybe I don't know what this kid. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna go on to the next episode and see what happens. Just oh. Dale. See ya. <laughs> Season 2, episode 12. I guess Carl learned his lesson. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you all. I told you. I told you. I told you Shane wasn't better. I told you he wasn't better. I told you he was still evil. Oh, I told you. 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 Ha! <laughs> Basically, after they had their little memorial for Dale, rest in peace, Dale, I am still super upset about that. Um, Lori had another talk with Shane, just further driving in the nail that they are no longer going to be a thing, and they never ever were a real thing. So, I think that was the last straw for Shane, because as after that, he just went completely mad, even more so than before. He took the prisoner that they had, uh, I think I just now learned his name, his name's Rodney, I think. Rod, either Rodney or Randall. Randall, Randall sounds m more correct, um, but anyways, and he took Randall out in the woods and then just murdered him, snapped his neck, and that was about it, um, but an interesting thing happened, 
uh, when later when Daryl and Glenn went in the woods looking for Randall because Shane lied about it. Shane said that Randall escaped. Um, so they went in the lo- uh, Glenn and Daryl went in the woods looking for him. Um, they found him his body, but it was zombified. And at first, I thought maybe a walker got him after uh, Shane snapped his neck, but no. There was no bites, no scratches on him. Um, and then Shane died later. Uh, Rick had to stab him because he was going to kill Rick. After that, um, then Shane became zombified in like a very short amount of time. I remember the guy at the CDC said there were reports of it happening in like as little as three minutes. So I, I, th- I thought that was a very interesting foreshadowing for this particular event. But yeah, Shane is Shane is zombified and dead now. Um, so what I'm gathering from this is that you don't need to be bitten to become a zombie. You just have to die without getting your brain or destroyed and stuff, which is very interesting. I'm sure they're going to elaborate that on uh, elaborate more on that in the next episode. Um, maybe that was what the scientist told Rick at the CDC. What the disease guy. I'm I'm just thinking about that. They never talked about that. They shrugged it off at the beginning of the season. Is that is that what he told them? That that's interesting. Anyways, I'm gonna check out the next episode. This is a big episode. I mean, nothing else really happened aside from Shane dying and doing this whole big betrayal scene after the direct director tried to fool us into thinking he was reformed. But yeah, next episode. Wowie zowie, so that was episode 13. Before I get into any of, like, the major character-related plot points, I just want to talk about, like, the the first third of the episode. The part that takes place during the barn burning scene. You know, this huge horde of zombies is coming, the one that we saw at the end of the last episode. And so, everyone's running, shooting zombies, trying to stop it from being overrun, but there's just way too many. There's like a massive army. And the funny thing about that is, that was the same horde we saw from the first episode in Atlanta. They traveled that distance, just completely by themselves, just kept going. That just shows that these things, they don't stop. They have no end to their stamina. While they aren't very fast, they can just keep going and keep going as long as they need to. They'll just go, 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 go. So that is... That is a really terrifying thing to know. <laughs> but just the music, the way that barn burning scene was orchestrated, and just the way everything played out, it was honestly a very beautiful scene. I don't know I don't know if I want to go with beautiful because of what horrible things were happening, but it was so well done as a scene overall. Herschel just wanting to go down with his barn. Uh the Kids that sacrifice themselves, you know, Herschel's kids. And then there was that lady, uh, the blonde lady, not Andrea, the other blonde lady. Her, I don't know if she was a sister or a mom or something, uh, but she went down. Um, we almost lost Carol. Um, there was someone else that we lost that I don't know. We lost two people. I'm honestly not sure who else we lost. I may remember in a little bit, but, um, uh, let's go with something minor first. Speaking of Andrea, they kind of left her behind. They thought she went down, or they lost her or something, and she's, like, running through the woods. And I want to say something real quick. Um, she was running all night, and yet, when we see her the next morning, she's still only, like, ten feet away from a couple walkers. Like, how do you run for that amount of time and only get that far away? That was just kind of silly to me. Like, how slow is she? <laughs> um, uh, but um, she was found by, like, this person with armless guys chained to him slash her. And they had, like, a machete or something. So I really want to know what that's all about and what's going on there. Um, but back with Rick and the group, they got split up, but re- reformed pretty quickly. They all found each other on the highway. Um... Daryl picked up Carol. <laughs> they rhyme. Uh, but they all regrouped, and Rick revealed what I called last time. I called it. I called it in the last episode. You don't need to get bitten. You just have it. If you die, that's it. You're zombified. I got that from when Shane woke up 
despite not being bit, and when uh, Randall woke up despite not being bit. So I figured it out. I don't know how many people figured it out before I did, uh, but I figured out the episode before it was real. Uh, episode before it was revealed. So ha ha ha. See, I'm starting to get a knack for the world of The Walking Dead, starting to theorize. Um, but Rick also revealed that he was the one that killed Shane. And it was not for the reason I thought it was. Um, I don't know what to think of Rick that much after this. Like, obviously Shane wanted to kill Rick. And, um, of course Shane had to die for that. Because, I mean, self-defense and all that. But it wasn't exactly self-defense. Rick kind of wanted it to happen so he could kill Shane. He kept he kept letting Shane push him and push him instead of putting a stop to it himself. So I don't know what to think of Rick or Shane. Like, obviously, I'm mad at Shane. He just let himself go. He went crazy and all that. Ugh. But I don't think Rick had to let it end that way. I feel like there was still a way he could have talked Shane out of it. I thought there was still a way things could have been handled. Um, but I don't know what to think about anyone anymore. I mean, Daryl's still my favorite. They are, they're all good, in my opinion. They're just thinking odd things about each other now that this big revelation has been revealed about, um, you know, they all have the disease. I'm just going crazy. My mind is thinking and theorizing and stuff, so I'll see you in the next season. I binged this like crazy. Like, this whole, this whole session, this whole video right here, this was recorded in a single day. I watched that much of this, like, 40 minute to an hour show in a day. I need to rest and recollect my thoughts, maybe rewatch a few short clips just to think about them more. Because, you know, when you binge stuff, you kind of lose information. So, I may go back a little bit and just analyze some stuff. But see you in the next video, guys.